Hello everyone, welcome to today's deck idea. We're working with werewolves. Uh, with the werewolves that we're running, we're trying to go with a very cheap mana cost, aggressive deck. We're using the new Val of Innistrad's Hungry Ridge Wolf, um, where it gets an additional plus one, plus zero, and trample if you have a, a wolf or werewolf in play. Or you're taking uh, you, advantage of also the new Pack Song Pup. So at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control another wolf or werewolf, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on Pax on Pup. When Pax on Pup dies, you gain one, uh, life equal to its power. So take advantage of these uh, nice, cheap, uh, common and uncommon cards. Uh, we're uh, using a lot of our two and three cost uh, werewolves. Uh, with the top out, uh, of the deck consisting of Arlen Cord. Or, I'm sorry, Arlen the Pax Hope. Oh, Arlen is a planeswalker that has a plus one until your next turn you may cast creature spells as though they have flash and each creature you control enters battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter and they also has a minus three to create two wolf creature tokens on the back side so when it's nighttime she has the ability to plus two to give us both a red and green mana or to use zero so that way until end of turn arlen the moon becomes a 5-5 five, five creature with trample and destructible in haste, making it a very large body that's hard to block. The main reason we want a copy of Arlen is because the plus one allows us to potentially take the turn off from casting creatures and playing during our opponent's turn to potentially give us a turn where it's um, nighttime to take advantage of most of our werewolf functions. The werewolves we're running uh, are we have four copies of Tovalar, because Tovalar, I think, is one of the most uh, essential werewolf cards that you can have. As whenever a wolf or a werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more wolves or, and or werewolves, it becomes night. Then transform any number of human werewolves you control. The last tag on that is important for if you're running uh, werewolves that are in older set formats, but for the standard format, that uh, tag doesn't really matter too much. On night side though, Tovalar does have whenever a wolf or werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, you draw cards still, but also has the ability to spend X, pay red, a green, target wolf or werewolf you control, gets plus X plus zero, and trample until the turn. To take advantage of the night, we have the Hound Tamer, where it is a three drop three three that has trample and you can spend four mana put a plus one plus one counter on target creature but on the night side it grants other wolves and werewolves you control trample as well making it so that way when it's night it's especially dangerous for our opponents we're also running the reckless storm seeker uh which during the night time turns to storm charge slasher a strong card on either side at the beginning of combat on your turn target creature you control will get plus one plus zero in haste during the night, it gives plus two, plus zero, trample in haste until the turn. So much more dangerous on the night. Uh, we are also running the um, Kessig Naturalist, that whenever it attacks, you'll get a red or a green mana until the turn. And while uh, during the night, we'll give other wolves and werewolves you control plus one, plus one. Uh, to help also shift it tonight, we are running a couple copies of Unnatural Moonrise, uh, where just casting it will turn it to night, and until the turn, target creature you can uh, target creature gets plus one plus zero until the turn, with uh, the ability and, and trample. And whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. It also has flashback for four mana, so we can play this back again from our graveyard. To finish off the deck, we're also running copies of Ranger class, creating ourselves the two two tokens and make it that way on level two. Uh, whenever we attack the creature, we'll get a plus one, plus one counter. And if we level up to four, we can start uh, playing creatures off the top of our deck. Uh, to protect our creatures, we have a couple copies of Snakeskin Veil. And to uh, cheat on some of the, the lands, we are running Kazul's Fury as a card that can be played as a land, or we can set, uh, as additional cost to cast a spell, we sacrifice a creature to deal damage equal to that sacrifice creature's power to any target. Giving us a little extra reach in um, uh, some games and possibly closing them out further than an opponent might uh, anticipate after blocks. So, 
uh, in the side deck because we're going to try this in the best of three format. Uh, we are running uh, Flame Blessed Bolts and Abrades to help deal with uh, aggro decks. Abrade is also a very good card for destroying artifacts. We're running uh, Cleansing Wildfires where it will destroy target land and then uh, the controller gets to search their deck for a basic land card and put it out to the battlefield tap. Then they shuffle. After we cast Cleansing Wildfire, we're also going to draw a card. We're also playing Cleansing Wildfire to destroy target land. Its controller will search their deck for a basic land card and put it out to the battlefield. Tapped. Uh, and we also get a draw card. We have this into the... Uh, we're putting this in the deck in case we come across a Book of Exalted Deeds deck to break up their combo so that way they don't make it so that way they can't lose. Um, we're also running Whirling Vortex against the Life Gain decks because they are very uh, popular uh, with the inclusion of some Life Gain support cards. And we're also running a couple copies of Choose Your Weapon. We decided to go with Choose Your Weapon because it does a great job of sh shooting dragons out of the sky with its archery option. But it can also be used as a um, surprise win uh, because doubling a creature's power and tough distance on the turn could be either used to protect a creature or even swing a, a lethal attack that a, a opponent wasn't necessarily uh, calculating for. Let's go ahead and jump on into the games. Okay, on our first opening hand, we see that uh, we unfortunately did draw uh, enough land, so we're going to hit the Mulligan button. Okay, this one's keepable because we've got the two land sources. Um, we don't know what we're playing against, but we'll take a risk putting Snakeskin Veil on the bottom. We say that's a bit of a risk because it means that we're not going to have an answer for any direct removal. We're going to start off our turn playing uh, Rockfall Veil vale because it's going to come to play tapped uh, if uh, we don't draw an untapped source next turn. Okay, we did. Uh, we'll go ahead and play at the mountain. Our opponent is showing white-blue. So we'll try to get the more aggressive line by going with the Naturalist. I say the Naturalist is more aggressive than going with our Ridge Wolf because we'll be able to potentially play both of our spells next turn. Okay, opponent's not having any of that with its Faithful Absence. In that case, we will go with the Stormseeker. Stormseeker's ability to give itself haste will allow us to attack him for some damage. Alright, so it's white, blue, green from our opponent. With an innkeeper. I'm not entirely sure what to expect from our opponent. Um, we'll go ahead and go with the Paxon Pup this turn because it'll be able to start getting plus one, plus one counters put onto it. We will choose to give it haste. Our opponent seems to have some type of instant speed interaction here. Probably. Oh, a revitalize. I wasn't expecting that. So, we'll go ahead and attack him. Uh, since our opponent does seem to have a fair bit of life gain built into their deck, it does mean that we'll probably bring in the Whirling Vortexes when it comes to side decking. Alright, there's a portable hole to get rid of our pup. Uh, we're really hoping to draw an untapped land, so that way we can play two of these. This sort of works as an untapped land. And we attack in. Get ourselves uh, a red source. And we will put another Ridge Wolf onto the battlefield. At this point, we're a little worried if our opponent does just go for a board wipe. We don't know what kind of deck we're really against. Our opponent doesn't play anything, so we'll put another Ridge Wolf onto the battlefield. Go for giving it uh, haste and swinging in. Sadly, the spell is not instant speed. Uh, opponent doesn't pay attention to the fact that it has trampled, but they were dead uh, regardless, so they didn't have any interaction. Alrighty. Uh, since we know our opponent has the life gain, we'll bring in the Roiling Vortexes. Um, I'm assuming they might be some type of landfall deck. Which means they might be running things like Scoot Swarms um, as a card to combo with the Innkeeper. But I'm not entirely sure uh, for certain. 
Um, I think we'll go down one pop. Um, we'll go down... Actually, let's go down two pups and a Hound Tamer for our Roiling Vortexes and continue like that. Okay, pretty keepable hand. We have three mana sources. We have Tovalar uh, and Stormseeker, so this is uh, very dangerous for our opponent. Very good for us. Uh, since we drew a third land source, we aren't even going to play that as a land. Uh, we'll start off with the green source. The big decision now. Do we go naturalist or ranger class? I think we'll go naturalist. This opens up the possibility of if we draw another two drop, we may go two two drops. We get a portable hole. That's okay. So we'll play Stormseeker. Attack him. Clement's got a lot of mana. Alright, they're just gonna pass the turn, not cast anything. That's very dangerous for them because it gives us night. Uh, we'll go ahead and try the Tovalar, see if this can resolve. Unfortunately, we are susceptible to a Jorar's Dispersal. Alright, Quandrix Command put our Stormseeker back in hand and grow their Innkeeper. We'll play this as a land, since we didn't draw more um, lands for a turn. Since it's night time, the opponent will have to play two spells to be able to switch it back. Zero spells played by our opponent. Um. Hmm. I think. I think we'll go for two ranger classes. Or actually, they didn't seem to have any responses there when we played that. So, actually, what we'll do is play ranger class, level it up. That way, we don't switch. Day night cycle. Attack with Tobalar. This will give it a plus one plus one counter. Meaning that it'll swing over their creatures. Tobalar connects, giving us a draw. Uh we're gonna play this as land. Would have liked to have been able to hold on to that as a surprise um a hit for our opponent. But being able to hold on to a snakeskin veil while we play other cards would be very good. Glorious Sunrise. Okay. It's a new card. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose one. Creatures you control get a plus one plus one counter and gain trample until the turn. Target land can tap for three mana until the turn. Draw a card if you control a creature with power three or greater, or you gain three life. It's a lot of different options on that. Very versatile. Uh, unfortunately for the opponent, we did get something that could uh, answer that. But let's go for the Storm Seeker. All right, didn't seem like the opponent had any responses. So we're gonna play our Outland Liberator. Give the Outland Liberator haste. Attack like so. Liberator is gonna potentially trade off with the Innkeeper, but that's okay. Uh, we get to destroy an artifact before any of the combat happens. All right, by forcing the opponent to block both innkeepers there, we are denying them the ability to gain life whenever creatures enter the battlefield, putting us in a, a, a worthwhile trade. We also get two card draws because the trample damage from Liberator. We'll play the forest, so that way we can hold up Snakeskin Veil. It does shift back to the day because we play two spells, but because of Tovalar, if they don't answer our board, 
which they're going to attempt with portable hole. All right, put this on here. It'll switch back to uh, nighttime, and we have the game. Interesting deck from our opponent, but I'm not fully sure what they're trying to do. It's uh, a unique build. Okay, this seems like a very solid hand. We have a bunch of two drops. We have three mana. Start off with Den of the Bugbear, just because it's the uh, land that will come to play tapped if we play it later in the game. I think we lead off with Naturalist, because Naturalist allows us to potentially play a creature and ranger class in the same turn, or just even uh, just play two of our uh, creatures in the same turn. I'm not sure what's the uh, stronger option. I think probably getting ranger classes out early is usually one of your best options most of the times. Alright, are we against Mono Black Control again? So, it looks like we're versus some type of zombie uh, deck. Whether it's black, blue, or not, still not revealed. This actually could just be mono black zombies. Alright. Opponent's not willing to trade off their guest. Oh, we'll take the two from the decayed token. Since we're not going to be able to double spell this turn, because we can't attack into their 2-3 death touch with just a 2-2. Two, two. We will set up... I'm trying to think what's the better options. Ranger class, still a very strong option, but I think we'll go with the Ridge Wolf. Ridge Wolf will probably keep their 2-3 back. If we just played Ranger class, they could still attack in with the 2-3. This also does set us up so that way we could actually attack in with the uh, the Ridge Wolf next turn um, after we play uh, Ranger class and make it so that way it doesn't just trade with the Shambling Ghast. Definitely eyeing our Ridge Wolf. They attack with the Adversary. We'll actually just let it hit us. Alright, it hold back. Alright, they held back completely. So we do get the transform. Uh what do we want to do? Um I don't really want to double spell this turn. I think what we'll do is we'll play the uh, Reckless Storm Seeker. We aren't going to give it self haste, but we will just pump this Ridge Wolf even further and attack with it. See if they'll trade with it. And we're just going to hold this Snakeskin Veil up as a protection spell. Okay. We're happy to see that they were giving up the Death Touch creature there. This means that it's going to be much easier for us to attack in with our other stuff. Alright, they play another Adversary. They can't attack in with that 2-2 two -two, because we can just block it. Alright, we'll play out a Ridge Wolf, and we will offer them back up another, another treat there. Alright, 
but it's still gonna take the trade. Uh, we choose not to play anything, because if we play uh, another spell, we flip it back to dayside, and we currently want it on night. My opponent is going to probably double spell this turn, which will unfortunately force us back to uh, daytime. Alright, so they're going to do Meat Hook for zero, because that will make it so that way the, uh, the token, when it dies, will start draining his life. Alright, so we still block the token, so that way we don't take the extra two points from it attacking. But we'll be able to destroy that Meat Hook Massacre uh, with this Liberator on our turn. So, let's see. How do we want to do this, actually? We can play Liberator. And we'll play for the Pulp. We'll give the pup the haste bonus, and we'll attack him with the pup and naturalist, offering these as trades, getting a green source. See what our how our opponent blocks. All right, they're giving up Jadar. So before that happens, we're going to take out Meat Hook Massacre. We did that so that way we don't get drained further from the Meat Hook Massacre. They probably had another copy of Jadar in hand. Oh, the opponent guys with a crippling fear. Well played by our opponent. Okay, so... We're just gonna... Throw out both of these Ranger classes against our opponent. We honestly shouldn't have probably done that in case they have another Crippling Fear, but I don't think the odds are high for that. I think Crippling Fear is at most a 2 of in their deck. Alright, so they're going to attempt to use Eaten Alive against our token, so we will protect it with Snakeskin Veil. Alright, they get another Jadar, which will create the Decay token again, and keep increasing this champion. I should have put that on red. Alright, so we will level up these Ranger classes, and we're going to race the opponent. Alright, with the opponent being down to 6... This does mean that we have a potential lethal strike against them next turn. Since our opponent drew land, uh, it's very likely we can get lethal for it. Yeah, that's just lethal right there. Well, but we'll, we'll just activate the land and attack wide to get the lethal through. Oh, I screwed up. Oh well. I, I, I arranged the uh, triggers in the wrong order. Well, this will still put our opponent down to one, which... Yeah, I, I, I made the mistake. I forgot the token. My plan was to attack, create the token. Token would get the two counters, and that would be lethal, because... They can only block two things, and we'd always have three power on a uh, at least getting through on two targets. But we managed to get there. Uh, let's see, based off of how our opponent's playing, these flame blessed bolts will actually be pretty solid. Um, let's see, Hound Teamer's probably decent. I think we'll take out. One Moonrise. Actually, I think I'll just take out the Moonrises in general. 
You know, play it like that. Maybe I should have just left one of them there, just because the ability to just shift it to night is always strong for our deck. Okay, seems like a pretty keepable hand. We start with probably Den of the Bugbear, so that way we can play that on our opponent's turn. Uh, for those who don't know, Flame Blast Bolt is a new card. Deal 2 damage to target creature or Planeswalker. That creature uh, or Planeswalker would die. Exile it. Um, we're going to pass the turn. See what our opponent plays. Because All right, by playing that, we will get rid of Champion of the Parish instead. If they were going for uh, Jadar, I would potentially play to remove Jadar. Um... We have plenty of land, so we'll hold on to this Fury as a uh, potential spell we will play. Alright, Tainted Adversary. Uh, that was unfortunately a turn late. Alright, go for the Hound Tamer. This gets our Day-Night Cycle started. Forcing our opponent to uh, keep playing spells. Ooh, the Headless Rider. This is actually a really strong zombie. So whenever they're non-token zombie side, they'll get 2-2 two -two zombie tokens to replace them. Uh, that'll allow them to edge out a lot of value with their creatures in general. Uh, so let's see. We play Tovalar and we just pass the turn. That's more value for the opponent. Right, we just take the two. There's no reason to block that. Alright, let's see. So, we can go land. Play the Naturalist. And we play the Rangers class. Next turn, thanks to Tovlar's ability. Uh, if Tovlar's still on the board, we'll be able to flip this into uh, the Night Cycle. Because we have uh, a total of uh, three wolf or werewolves. Alright, we take another two here. Let's see, this is trigger off the tokens. Or another zombie control dies. So yeah, if when this token dies, they'll be able to get a trigger from this. Um, which will allow them to look at the top of their deck. And if it's a zombie, it can add to hand. Um, if they... Don't uh, put that card into the hand. They may put it into their graveyard. They don't have to. Um, let's see. So we go for the Ranger class level up. And we will attack. By attacking with everything, we are making it so that way we can get some draw triggers here off Tovlar. And with the Untamed Pup flipped over, we can actually put a plus one, plus one counter on a card to potentially save it from dying. So if they don't add another blocker to Tovalar. Oh, uh, alright. Any other blockers from our opponent? Because this is a lot of damage that's going to get through. Alright, so that's going to be six damage getting through, plus five... Actually, not six, but three, four, so seven, ten, thirteen. All right, yeah, we have lethal, actually, because Kazul's fury. All right, we did game our opponent. Because Kazul's fury to the face. Okay, off this opening hand, we unfortunately don't have any green sources. We do have the ability to play the Ridge Wolf, but without a green source, I think this is a little too risky to keep, so we'll mulligan. Okay, this one we will keep. We'll throw a Kazul's Fury onto the bottom of the deck. It Hello, game? Game. 
There we go. Sometimes the uh, game gets sticky with these double-sided cards once when you're mulliganing. Alright. So, reverse red-blue. We will start off with the naturalist. Opponent has fading hope to put it back in our hand. The question is, do we go for the naturalist? Red, blue, black. Okay. Haven't seen Valky in a while. Very solid card. Question is, do they take our Stormseeker or Tovalar? They decide on Tovalar. We draw another Tovalar. Um, we'll go Stormseeker. That way we can just get in the haste, three damage. Next turn, we have the opportunity to either play the Tovar or we could play Kessing uh, Naturalist and give that haste, attack with it, get the mana trigger, and either then play Tovar or the Paxon Pup. Um, we know that our opponents got pushed back in uh, their deck. They probably are running cards like... Uh, well, I'm blanking on the names of them, unfortunately. Um... They're, they're, they're totally going to be playing that 3 mana cost pushback spell. Uh, pushback meaning the card that will uh, return something from the board back to hand. But they can also return spells back to hand as well. Uh, I think we'll just attempt Tovalar. That way if it does resolve and nothing happens in a bad way, we can get card draw action going. All right, there's the divide by zero. That was the card that I was blanking on the name of. With our Tovalar on the board, we do have a good-sized body. The thing is, it's if the opponent attacks with the Valky, they can transform into the Tovalar and make it a trade. But we get the Tovalar back to our hand with the Exile with the Valky, so I don't think they'll do that. All right. Let's see. I think this turn... We'll attempt to attack first. See what our opponent does. Alright, they're going to put a block. We let it resolve. Are they going to transform? I don't know why they didn't transform. I guess they wanted to hold up a removal spell. Or get us with a board wipe to get more of our cards. Um, we will play this as a land. That way we can have the option of using Bugbear. Um, and we will play the, just the Naturalist out this turn. By playing only one spell, we do mean that it does mean that it'll stay on the nighttime side. With these larger bodies, it does make it harder for our opponent to potentially use uh, burn removal. Alright, so we get a blood cheese thirst from our opponent. And they are holding two lanes. They did play two spells, so it did shift back today. A little unfortunate for us. We'll go for the Storm Seeker. Didn't see any response on slowdown from our opponent. So we are going to dedicate to this board. Get ourselves some draw triggers from this Tovalar. Alright, we don't want to see any more lands. We have drawn more than enough. Alright. There is the burn down the house. We were kind of expecting a board wipe, but we wanted to make sure we had enough wolves on the board, just in case. Um, so let's see. We go Arlen, and we use the plus. By using the plus, we actually are playing around burn down the house. While burn down the house can still kill Arlen, 
Uh, it does mean that we can play Tovalar after it to sit on the board. Okay. So if I did an expressive iteration and pass this turn, we will attempt the Tovalar, see if it resolves. I divide by zero to push it back in our hand again. We will plus the Arlen once more. Wait for the perfect moment to strike. We have enough mana that we can actually activate Bugbear and use this as an attacker and still have mana for Tovalar during their end step. Oh, forgot to mention that. This ability, the plus one, isn't just our casted creatures entering the battlefield get plus one plus one counters. It's just each creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter. So it actually does synergize with Bugbear. Okay, so a Blood Chief search to finish off our Arlen. Now the wilds are threatened. But it's passing turn. We attempt Tovalar once more. He's on the board. Does he stick? Or is he getting bounced back to our hand? If he doesn't... Alright, they waited for our turn. So we have the option to do a lot of things now. One, two, three, four. Bugbear. Okay. That resolves. Get ourselves a green source. We'll attack in. Uh, didn't look like there's any responses from our opponent, so we'll attempt to see Snakeskin Veil there. It worked. That's lethal. The reason we tried to put Snakeskin Veil on the Goblin token instead of on Tovalar was well, because if they tried to bounce um, Tovalar if, uh, in response to our Snakeskin Veil, um, we would just be short of lethal by sacrificing in response to going to their face. But if we they try to respond to it going onto the token, um, it meant that we could still sacrifice the token um, or Tovalar after combat to finish off the opponent. I said that in a bad way. What I meant was, here, let me just go back to here. If Since this was at 2 power, this was at 5 power, if they interacted with Tovalar um, before damage was dealt, we could sacrifice it to the Kazul's Fury to still get the 5 damage through. Um, which is why we put Snake Can Veil on here. If uh, they mess with the token at all, Tovalar hits, and then we sacrifice to go to face again. So we had multiple ways to still get it through lethal wise by sacrificing the Tovalar uh, after snakes can veil damage um, if they didn't have an answer at all. Okay, so uh, what's the plan here? I know what kind of deck they are. I don't have anything in the side deck for them. Their whole point is to play a lot of spells um, and then just replay them from their graveyard, thanks to um, the one creature that um, I'm blanking on the name of uh, Ly Lyra, I believe, or something like that. I I'm totally blanking on it. It's a blue creature. Um, I think we could just run it back as is. We may want Roiling Vortexes. I think we'll run it back, see how things work out. If we decide we need the Roiling Vortexes, we can bring those in. None of our other cards really impact the opponent that much. To warrant bringing in the others. Uh, we have to mull this, because we have an all-green hand and only one red source. Okay, this one's keepable. Um, they are a lot of heavy direct control cards. So the question is, do we give up the Snakeskin Veil, or do we give up the Creature? I think we'll give up Liberator. They might be the version that runs the Artifact. Uh, the Artifact that just taps for mana. Um, I think we'll, we'll go down to Snakeskin Veil. Um, I think... I think that that will be what we do. All right.
So we go for the naturalist again instead of going for the other two cards because this gives us had the option to give us the ability to play more than one spell next turn. Disruption says otherwise. Um, we will go for the ranger class. Opponent responds with the Blood Chief's Thirst. There's good old Valky again. Alright. I think... Let's see. Do we go for the Tovalar? we we'll go for Tovalar over to Liberator. Hmm. I think that... Now what we'll do is we'll go for the Liberator. reason we choose to go for Liberator is because we can... Set it up for a... Ranger class level up. Now when we start attacking with our creatures, if we get like one of our haste options... Um, we're able to just build up the creature against them. We'll take the hit from the Valky. We're not too worried about it. Because they can always transform the creature and it just we lose our creature, they keep theirs. Alright, we attempt Tovalar. See if it gets to sit on board. Go for an attack. Alright, they have the power word kill. Unfortunate, but he bites it. I'm just going to take four from uh, that action. And we'll play the Ridge Wolf. Alright, so the Pumas is going to transform. Since it's daytime, Ridge Wolf can trade with Tovalar. Opponent is going to kill our Ridge Wolf so that way they can just get the draw triggers off our own Tovalar. Question is, do we need to hold back to block from our Tovalar, or do we just get aggressive? It's a little tricky. I think we'll just still be aggressive. Let's see, move to combat, see what the opponent does. Alright, we attack. Alright, Memory Deluge from our opponent. Alright, opponent's still just doing the single target removal spells. So that way they can get in with Tovalar. One of the reasons why I decided that we'll just keep attacking was because... That's why. I, I didn't expect us to be able to keep our creatures. Um, they have enough mana that they can hit this, so we're going to tap it for mana to level up Ranger class, because we need to start trying to play creatures off the top of our deck. Uh, let's see, we need another red source. Seeing a land on top is not the end of the world, because we can still play creatures off the top. We just have to hopefully see a creature on top, which we did. Alright. This allows us to get in a lot of damage. Oh, if you're wondering why the uh, Tovalar on their side isn't transforming, it's because Valky only is allowed to copy the front side of the card. It can't copy the back side. So... Valky can't transform um, with a transform card. Okay. So we're just relying on the Snakeskin Veil to allow us to uh, 
keep this storm charge slasher around. There's Leer. They only have one mana. It's a black red source. Oh, that gives two. Alright, they attempt to go for the kill spell, but we have the protection. And thanks to Kazul's Fury here, we have Lethal. Because we get up to six power, and we set it to the face. Ah oh, man, yeah, never underestimate the power of these uh, fling effects like Kazul's Fury. Hello and everyone, welcome back up to the uh, uh, wrap up of the deck. As you saw, the deck actually did pretty well. Um, we only lost one game to the mono black uh, control deck, but we managed to win against another variation of it right after. As you can see, it's a very quick, aggressive deck. The uh, trample by nature on things like the Hungry Ridge Wolf and the Hound Tamer really came in handy. Um, the Unnatural Moonrise, unfortunately, I think you might just be better off with just some simple spot removal spells. Uh, just to clear the way from your, your werewolves. So just running maybe the Flame Blessed Bolts or a Braid's main board might just be more beneficial. But there were times where this was still a useful spell. Obviously, Tovalar is still one of the biggest backbones uh, cards to this deck. I do believe that for the deck to run more optimally, you need more copies of Reckless Stormseeker. But the new additions of Paxlon Pup and the Hungry Ritual did feel like they were working really well in the deck. What would I suggest maybe to make room for the uh, extra copies of Stormseeker? I think you just cut one Ridge Wolf and one Pup, and that should be all the, the changes that this deck really needs. Um, I mean, I guess you could also, like I said, change out the Moon Rises for some burn spells. Getting some uh, one mana burn spell options in the deck does uh, give you better advantage against the mono white aggro decks or other similar low cost creature aggro decks as well. Thank you for watching the video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more content. If you'd like to join me while I stream, you can find me on Twitch at the link below. I hope to see you again in the next video and have a nice one.